disappointing. On our calendar, it says today is Transfiguration Sunday. And we're going to be hearing more about that. Tomorrow is United Methodist Men at 7 o'clock. Tuesday, Kids Club will be meeting at the end. And then Bible study will meet here at 6.15. Wednesday um, is Ash Wednesday, and the Ash Wednesday service will be at Eldon at 6.30. Lions will be meeting at 6.30, but there will be no choir practice. Um, next Sunday, Roxy Kern will be speaking. And the following Sunday, Deb Kitt will be speaking. Our mission of the month for February is World Vision, which supports our orphan. Um, we got a message. Season's uh, greetings. Um, if I'm, I think our orphan's name is Fergus John Atul. That's my best guess, pal. And I'm not sure if it's a he or she. <laughs> but at this time of year, it says we celebrate harvesting time. They drew pictures. We go to travel. We have a national monument. He likes to, he, she likes to eat mango and likes to play football, which is soccer. Um, so our small change that goes in our extra containers and offering plate this month goes to help support our orphan. We also got some happy reminders in the mail. Um, the agency, United Methodist Church has paid 100% of their apportionments. So um, that's a powerful witness of the vision we share for being the Church of Jesus Christ together. So there's a congratulation notes from there. A thank you note from the Ecumenical Lord's Cupboard for our most recent donation of $348. Um, Although final numbers have not yet been released, a fair estimate of people served by the Lord's Covered in 2017 is 6,600. 2,150 of them being children. So, 200 new clients have used the Lord's Covered, 60 of them being homeless when they arrived at the door. So, we have increased our giving to the Lord's Covered this year, and um, it's going out and helping a lot of people. Uh, we also have a thank you from the Women at the Well Ministry for our donation, and a thank you from UMCOR for our donation to the Redbird Mission. So our missions are sent, are going out into the world and doing lots of good, so let's keep up that good work. All right, other announcements? In the office, there's information about a camp for children with diabetes. If you know what's in one Okay, so there's information in the office about a camp for children with diabetes, so if you know anyone that is dealing with that, that might be a good resource for them. Um, birthdays this week, Katie Kent Vaughn having a birthday on the 11th, Tanya Bowes on the 12th, Kylie Williams on the 14th, Darren Batterson on the 14th, and Delaney Batterson on the 16th. Are there any further announcements? If not, would you please stand and join with me in the printed folk worship? Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This, this is my son, son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Let us join together in hymn 349, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us. That with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
scripture readings this morning, we'll start with Psalm 50. We'll find it in the hymnal on page 783. <gasps> Give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory 
displayed in the face of Christ. And from the Gospel, I'll read from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. On the Pew Bibles, it's on page 1571. The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of God for the people of God. Jesus. And they climbed the mountain, and the Bible tells us that Jesus took them, took Peter, James, and John up on that high mountain, and when they were alone, Jesus' appearance began to change, and he became all shiny and white and dazzling. That would be kind of strange, wouldn't it? The disciples got real excited because, wow, this is sparkly and shiny, and this is different, and we don't know what's causing it. And so they started saying all sorts of things because they didn't know what to say. And then there was a voice that they heard that said, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Do you know who that was? Who should we listen to? That was God. And he was saying that we should listen to Jesus. Now, we might not ever get to go up on a mountain where things change into shiny, sparkly, dazzling colors. But we can have really good times walking with Jesus. And sometimes we walk up in a symbolic mountaintop, and we need those times. Because we need those times for when we come back down from the mountain to walk with Jesus through our plain old ordinary lives, even when we're not shining in the Jesus takes us through the mountain. 
mountaintops and through the valleys, and he's with us everywhere. Can you remember that? All right, let's hold our hands together. Can you say breath? Can you try? Dear God, our Father, we want to walk with Jesus and let his, shine, let his light shine on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go be transfigured. Let's see what we can change. Today is from the second Kings, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. You can find it on page 566 in your Q Bible. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets of Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elijah, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets of Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit the double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. This is the concluding message of our Rise Up series. A series intended to help us to rise up and get ready for our work of accompanying people on their journey to baptism or to restoration in the life of the church during the season of Lent, which begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. We are reminded that it is God speaking to us and among us, that we need to listen to God's voice. We must be ready to move when and where the Spirit says move. We must rise up and answer to God's call in whatever context that we and the people will help are in. We need to stay focused on our work which God has called us to, the core work of being and making disciples of Jesus Christ, not just being in fellowship or friendship. And we need to hear and to help others who will walk with during Lent to hear God's call to go deeper, to follow Jesus where he leads. So far in this series we have heard God speak just this morning we heard God speak about his beloved son, whom we are to listen to. God speaks to us as beloved children in whom he is well pleased. We have considered how we listen, listening to God, to God's prophets, listening to simple preachers like me and listening to one another. We have thought about how we will move in response to what we have heard, whether it be to Ethiopia or just the next town over. We considered what answer means. Starting with God's answer to the Israelites for a prophet, through the coming of the prophet, priest, king, Messiah, Jesus Christ. 
and finishing with the answer that we owe God in turn. Last week we sought focus, what things we need to focus on and how we can achieve and maintain that focus, both as Christians and as our local church. And today we come full circle to emphasize God is still speaking. In our sermon scripture, God is speaking to Elijah, who then shares that message with Elisha. God is telling Elijah to go, and Elijah goes. Who is Elijah? Elijah is probably the greatest prophet since Moses. He also seems to have a bit of an attitude and a, and a penchant for fire. He's the one who called fire down on the altar to discredit the prophets of Baal to show that the Lord is God, consuming not only the offering, but the entire altar. Another time he was sitting on a hill after giving the king a hard time, that is, a damning prophecy from the Lord. And when the king sent a captain and his guard up to summon Elijah, Elijah called fire on them too. And also on the second captain and his guard of 50 who came to fetch him. God had Elijah covered. Then we have Elisha. Elisha is introduced in 1 Kings chapter 19. God speaks to Elijah, telling him who his successor will be. Elijah seeks him out and finds him in a field plowing. Not in a John Deere, mind you, but behind a yoke of oxen. As a matter of fact, it is the last group of 12 yoke of oxen. Scripture tells us that Elijah passes Elisha by and throws his mantle, his, his overcoat, over Elisha and keeps going. Elisha follows Elijah, perhaps not as quickly as Elijah would have liked. But when Elisha does follow, it's after literally burning his past. The oxen which he had been guiding, he consumed and, and cooked with the flames of the yoke that the oxen were attached to and shared that meal with his family. Then Elisha becomes Elijah's servant, perhaps much like Joshua was to Moses, as the same Hebrew word we translate as servant is used in each case. And then we don't hear anything about or out of Elisha for the next several chapters, several chapters that cover at least four years. He's just serving Elijah until we get to our sermon text. Who is Elisha? Probably a young man working on a family farm, a family which if the number of oxen teams is any indication is doing all right for itself. A man who is attached to his new father figure, Elijah, as indicated by his unwillingness to be separated from him on three occasions, as indicated by his reaction to the company of prophets' statement of Elijah's imminent departure, or his death, as they thought it would be, as indicated by his request for a double portion of Elijah's spirit and rending of his clothes in grief when God takes Elijah away. Elisha is a man who accepts God's calling to take up Elijah's mantle as a prophet of the Lord. Elisha's commitment was unfailing. So what is, the, what is the point of this trip that they take in these verses of our sermon scripture? I believe it serves a couple purposes. First, it links these two prophets with Moses and Joshua, legitimizing their authority. And second, it shows Elisha's character. Elijah seems to be reversing the course of Joshua when the Israelites entered the Promised Land. The stop of Bethel not only recalls the historical role of Bethel in the religious imagination of the northern Israelites, but also the pivotal role it plays in the battles of Jericho and Ai. Elijah's itinerary mimics that of Joshua, only that rather than entering into the land, Elijah prepares to leave. The parting of the Jordan confirms this connection, whereas the Ark of the Covenant accomplishes this for Joshua, Elijah's mantle, or his rolled-up overcoat, draws the waters back for him. In traveling this path, Elijah travels backward to Egypt, but rather than returning to Egypt with his memory of oppression, Elijah's path leads him to heaven. And as the exodus happens with mighty signs and wonders, the whirlwind and fiery chariots and horses mark Elijah's path. The text immediately following our sermon scripture is quick to point out that the power of the prophetic office does not disappear with the chariots and horses that stampede out of sight. 
To the contrary, the text affirms that the power of this prophetic office remains firmly in place in the life of Elisha. We have seen Elijah and Elisha portrayed as a type of Moses and Joshua, where Joshua was clearly Moses' successor, so too is Elisha Elijah's successor. When they cross the Jordan, they are in a region where Moses died, where, where he spoke of the Lord's answer to the people's request for a prophet. And now Elisha will be returning to the land as Israel's new prophet. But before Elijah is taken up, Elisha asks for a difficult thing. To receive a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And clearly, Elisha is using inheritance language, which states that the rightful heir, typically the firstborn son, receives a double portion of the inheritance due to children. At this point, Elisha has given up his efforts to hold on to Elijah. He has accepted the inevitable. So the thrust of this passage is not about what happened to Elijah, as amazing as it was, but what happens to the prophetic voice of God. This story is an example of God continuing to speak in new generations who are willing to take up that mantle. What's the point? As I was trying to prepare the sermon, I, I came back to that question time and time again. What's the point? It's a great story. It's got great historical context. But what's the point? The point is that we must be faithful servants like Elisha and Elijah before him. It doesn't matter if we're not the prophet or even a prophet. We must still represent God to others. It can be difficult, but if we are willing and have the heart to serve others, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we can faithfully serve God. Now what can we learn from Elisha? Well, we can refuse to be distracted. Three times Elisha responds to Elijah's attempt to leave him behind. As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. Even when the company of prophets came with discouraging words, Elisha was focused, as we should be focused. God called Elisha to a mission, and Elisha fulfilled it passionately. Every God follower is a missionary. That is why we Methodists have switched from calling people like me ministers to pastors, because every Christian is a minister and has a ministry or mission. What is your mission? How does your mission serve the mission collectively as the church? This is what we aim to find out using our value surveys as tools. To find our vision and mission. And now is the perfect time for us to do that. We have the tools. God is speaking. We are listening. We are prepared to move. We know what to focus on and how to achieve and maintain that focus. We know God's answer. Now we're working on our answer back. Lent is a season of 40 days, not counting Sundays, which begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Holy Saturday. The word Lent comes from an Anglo-Saxon word, Lenten, which means spring. These 40 days represent the time Jesus spent in the wilderness being tempted by Satan and preparing to begin his mission. Lent is a time of repentance, fasting, and preparation for the coming of Easter. It is a time for self-reflection and examination. In the early church, Lent was a time to prepare, to prepare new converts for baptism. Today, Christians focus on their relationship with God, often choosing to give up something or to volunteer or give of themselves to others. Reflect on our values and what mission you are called to serve passionately. Make yourselves ready <coughs> to help translate those values into a mission and vision statement for this church. Think about your dedication to your calling and mission. To be dedicated to our calling and the ministry we're engaged in means to put in the time and effort whatever it is that God has called us to do. Too often we offer God what is left of our time and talents and hope the earth is a noble sacrifice rather than bringing the first fruits to God. If we are Christ followers, we will serve him passionately and be dedicated to our calling. 
Look around you, brothers and sisters. This is us. If we are Elijah, who will our Elisha be? Did we do what it takes to prepare our successors? To prepare for our successors? Are we willing to make Elisha level changes if God calls us to them? Will we be radically welcoming and then show God's work in our lives to others? A certain man went to the pastor of his church and said, I won't be attending church anymore. The pastor said, may I ask why? The man said, I see people on their cell phones texting and typing during the service. Some are gossiping. Some just aren't living right. Some are sleeping. Some are staring at me. They're all just hypocrites. And even you've said and done stuff I haven't necessarily agreed with. The pastor was silent. Then he said, can I ask you to do something for me before you make your final decision? <coughs> the man said, what's that? The pastor said, take a glass, fill it full of water, and walk around the church two times. He came back and proudly said, it's done. The pastor asked him these questions. In your laps around the church, did you see anybody on their phone? Did you see anybody gossiping? Was anybody living wrong? Or did you see anyone sleeping? Did I cause you any consternation? The man said, I didn't see anything. I was focused on this glass so the water wouldn't spill out. The pastor told him, when you come to church, you should be that focused on God so that you don't fall. That's why Jesus said, follow me. He didn't say, follow them. Beloved, doing what we have always done is easy. Change is hard. Elisha tore his clothing in grief at the loss of Elijah. Yet he picked up the mantle that God intended for him and immediately began his new mission. Parting the Jordan, just as Elijah had done, on his way back into the promised land. I ask that we be faithful servants like Elisha, faithful to God. <coughs> Rise up, taking up the mantle that has been laid upon us. God is speaking. We must listen and move as we answer God's call, keeping our focus on God and the work that we are called to do. God is speaking. So the next couple days, pray about what God would have you do during this time of preparation that we start on Wednesday. Be ready for whatever repentance, fasting, sacrifice, or giving of yourself that you are called to do starting on Ash Wednesday. Set, a time, set aside time and space to listen and gird yourself for the work to come. Almighty God, we are thankful that you are still speaking. Give us ears to listen, wisdom to discern, and courage and strength to do the mission that you would have us to do. And we thank you for these things. In Jesus' precious name.
together in the affirmation of faith. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now's the time to bring our praise and petitions before the Lord and one another. I want to give a little update on Mikhail. The beginning of the week, things were looking wonderful. He's five pounds, and they were even talking about discharge. Then later in the week, he forgot to breathe and got everybody all scared again. So Linda, Mama, is kind of discouraged right now because she was, they were starting to talk about maybe bringing him home and, and things like that. So, um, but he's got to get well enough that he can breathe by himself because we're home when we forget to breathe. Then uh, that's, that's going to be a lot harder. So I, God knows the time in the past, but it's, uh, the, the family's been a little discouraged. Anyone else? Let us pray, offering our intercessions with the church and the world. Lord Jesus Christ, you reveal yourself to your disciples and to us in all your glory. We are left speechless. Send us the Holy Spirit to pray in and through us for the church and the world with signs too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy, in hear our prayer. prayer. For the leaders and members of your church throughout the world, that we may not seek to build shrines, but listen to you in simple obedience. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, corporations, states, cities, and other seats of influence and power, that their hearts and actions may be turned toward justice, peace, and the common good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the earth, the land, the rivers, the seas, the sky, and for all that live with us upon it, that we may sustain it and one another in this life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, hurting, dying, and for all those who accompany them on journeys toward healing or release, especially Jude and Mary, and Bob and Marilyn, Gay, Bob Muir, Carol and Rexton, Maddie and Jane, for Casey, for Sandy, for Mikhail. Paul, Rob, for Elaine's family, for 
care of. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are abused or oppressed, and all who suffer because of war or famine or disaster, or imprisonment that justice and deliverance may come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sin and for the courage of Elisha to dare to ask for a double portion of your spirit, that we may boldly follow where Jesus leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This time I invite the others to come forward.
see the blessing? Jesus shines with glory. We are his body. God speaks the sober truth. We must listen to Jesus and follow where he leads. You who shine now with Christ's glory, go now from the mountain into the valley, from rejoicing to suffering, from fellowship to persecution, from a vision of eternal life to the realities of mortality, from transfiguration to Lent. God has work for us to do. Let's start getting ourselves and the seekers in our midst ready to do it. In the name of God, Holy Three, Holy One. Amen. Thank you.